I don't know if I'm okay. Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. Now, although I know some of you will be disappointed that this is filmed two days after uh, the events that you just saw, uh, I'm looking at you Reef Talk when I say some of you. So I did obviously survive, uh, but I, so I'm, almost, I'm basically almost back to normal. Uh, but it, it definitely took took it out of me for a few days. So um, I did film some of the events. The reason I I didn't film a huge amount of it, uh, you'll see why I didn't film a huge amount of it, but um, I wanted to just run through with you what happened. Uh, but I appear to have been uh, affected or poisoned essentially by palytoxin. So um, let me run through the events with you on that day and then I'll show you some clips of that I, some of the brief bits I filmed uh, and I'll also put add some inf additional information as well in between there. Now the original reason I came into the fish room that day wasn't even to do any fragging. Uh, my, the video I was planning to do uh, was one on cob band. so many of you will have seen I put a post out saying how do you think I managed to keep seven copper bands alive. Um, so I, I was, as I said I was filming uh, some for that video and then the person that was coming to collect corals that day uh, sent me a message saying they couldn't come. So I had some more time on my hands. So I started filming. Uh, you have to really be in the mood to, uh, to film certain videos. And then I decided that because I've got some spare time, I'm going to do some frags. Now, I mentioned in a previous video, there's certain corals which I have basically let run riot, uh, which I will show you now. Now, before the video continues, it's really important that I let you know that there are millions of people which keep zoas and pallies in their tanks. And in your tank, undisturbed, it is very, very, very incredibly unlikely you're going to have an issue. The issue comes when you do what I do, and you either try to remove them from your tank, or you try to frag them or cut them up. Now, those of you that have been watching the channel recently will know that the bit by bit I've been trying to uh, get the coral trays under control. Now, I've done most of the SPS tray, and then the next job was to do the zoas. And as you can see, the biggest issue seemed to be the pandoras, which are growing absolutely out of control. So I started off the week by fragging uh, some of the Utter Chaos and the uh, Pink Diamonds. Uh, I've done a few of the pandoras, as you can see. Uh, and then, uh, and the other things that were the uh, Granny Apple Smiths. I'm not great with zoa sometimes, because there's so many names. Uh, and the Woodstocks and uh, the Rainbow ones. Uh, were the ones I got through, basically, before I got to what appears to be my nemesis. Now these are what are known as Pali Grandis, which are known to be one of the more toxic versions of Pallies and Zoas. Um, and uh, I believe that this is what I, what made me sick. So I had a colony of about, as you can see, 20 to 25 of them. I, I broke them up into sort of twos, singles, twos and threes and uh, when I fragged them, I hadn't, I hadn't really seen this before, um, they turned, they, they very very quickly turned the most white and slimy of any of the pallies and zoas I've ever seen. Right now pallies and zoas contain a palytoxin and they are not a coral which I uh, frag lightly. I don't like fragging them i fragged them many, many times without any issues at all, but I always take extra precautions. So this is what I wear. So I wear a full face-fitting mask. Uh, well, goggles protect my eyes. Uh, I have a mask on to try to protect me from breathing anything in. And I have these full-length gloves, which were recommended by the inappropriate reefer, to, um, to try to stop it from getting on my skin. Right, so now that I've shown you all the precautions that I did take, let me show you what happens when those precautions don't work. I'm really quite unwell at the moment. You probably see the camera is shaking because I literally have chills everywhere. Um, this morning I was in the coral room and I was fragging uh, Pally Grandis, which I believe are one of the worst ones. Oh, there you go. There's another another chill um, for Pally toxins. Now I'm not saying this is what Pally toxins are. I'm also doing a lateral flow test at the moment, but I um, <coughs> feel awful. I started with a uh, the sore throat about two hours after I did it because I was in the car room even after I'd fragged them. 
And I was careful, but I was using the saw. And then, so after, after I, I don't know where I am, after I got a sore throat, I got a cough, which is why I thought it could be the virus. And I have a high temperature. I now can't stop fucking. <laughs> can't stop shaking. <laughs> and I feel chills everywhere. Now, some of you are probably thinking, you know, what's he doing? He should be going to the hospital. I don't feel that bad yet. I don't feel bad enough to go to the hospital. I do have a high temperature. But um, the chances are you will never see this because if it's not that, then there's no point in me ever showing this. But uh, <sighs> bloody hell, I feel rough. <laughs> I'm probably going to give it another half an hour. And then. Um, and then we'll see. But I'm not the sort of person who wants to go there and then they just go, what's wrong with you? Which might be my downfall. <laughs> so if this is the last you see me, you know, thank you, uh, you know, to everyone for watching, you know. Thank you to, you know, my subscribers and Patreons. See, I can't remember what I say at the end. <laughs> you know, have a good week and I'll see you, you know. Never. <laughs> well, um, we'll see. And if I get worse, I'll update you. It'll be very dramatic. It'll be me in an ambulance. You know, sirens blazing. I'll be interviewing the, uh, you know, the paramedics. And they'll be like, why are you filming this? But, uh... <laughs> I didn't worry all day until probably, till the shaking starts. That was, that was when I started worrying. But the reason, as I said, I filmed this is because, you know, maybe you've done what I've done, or maybe you're going to do what I did, where fragging the Zoas, and maybe you should reconsider it. Because <laughs> it, it looks like whatever it is, it's going to be a rough night. So, anyway, I shall, um, I shall leave you, and uh, if there's a dramatic sequel to this video, you know, Wish me luck. The other thing which I didn't mention in the video is that uh, I'd also had a big euphilia order in literally that day while the uh, while the symptoms already started. So uh, <laughs> it was uh, it was a lot to take on. It's um it's now bad enough that I actually have to. Uh, I'm going to go because <laughs> I'm like five. I'm going to go with, with my parents because they're genuinely worried, and I'm genuinely worried. <laughs> right now, I didn't really film very much after this point because I really genuinely was very, very sick, like throwing up. Um, something I didn't mention at any point is uh, that I was getting sort of like pins and needles down my arms. Uh, and the other thing, which I didn't actually know was an issue until the next day, was that my heart appeared to be racing. So I could hear my heart in my head. Um, you know, sometimes you can hear like, like that thumping noise. Um, and my heart rate was 110. Now, I, I don't know what a, a normal heart rate is, so I googled it. And a heart rate, a normal human heart rate, when it's resting is anywhere between 60 and 100. So I, after I saw it was 110, I didn't think too much more into it. What I didn't realize is when I checked my heart rate a couple of days later, my heart rate, my resting heart rate is usually 60. So, <laughs> so it was racing at that time. Uh, that, that was the thing that probably frightened me the most, I would say. Now, the reason I went to my parents' house is because if I need to be taken anywhere urgently or, um, uh, then I, I, I wanted I wanted to be with other people that I trusted essentially, uh, and obviously I live on my own now. Uh, and the other thing is, my mum has watched so many episodes of uh, medical medical dramas that she's basically a nurse. So um, I think uh, if 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 she did need to do anything, she'd be able to do it for me. If she would want to resuscitate me, that's another question. Uh, <laughs> but um, while I was at my parents' house and I was in a state of absolute delusion. 
and you'll know is a state of delusion, is because um, of what happened next. I was messaging a reef dork. Uh, I'm not sure why reef dork was the person that I decided to message, you know, in my, my moment of need. Um, but uh, I gave him permission that if anything did happen to me, that he would need to keep a message from me at that moment, that he could come in and he could take whatever he wanted. Uh, and he had the first pick. Now, obviously I did survive. So if I do go missing now, check Reef Dog's basement because he will still have that message, I'm sure. And, uh, and I, uh, I know he's got his eyes on some of these, some of these bits. Now so, the next part of the video was when I was at my worst. Now I did actually put a, a, a picture out on Instagram at one point, uh, but it was a little bit light-hearted and then gradually by the time it got to the, the next stage I decided to, uh, to remove it because it, I felt like it was, it was becoming a little bit more serious. I don't know if I'm okay. <sighs> Right, it's the next day now. I um, I had a rough night. I had a really, really rough night, <laughs> if I'm honest. Probably the illest I've ever been. Quite possibly ever. Um, about two, probably between twelve and two in the morning. I just thought to myself, I I need to go to hospital. Like I was sweating and fraying up and. <coughs> the only thing I was doing was a cough. But I'm like one of those old people, you know how they, you know, the whole arms falling off, but they sit there. They go, oh, no, I don't want to inconvenience anyone, so I didn't. So they don't, uh, they don't go to uh, to the doctor. But it um, it really was quite frightening. So <clears throat> anyway. If this happens to you, don't be like me. Don't be like me. Don't be an idiot. Just just go straight there. My theory was, look, I've already, I was already like 10 hours in and I was still alive. So, but definitely last night, as I said, between 12 and 2 was like the lowest point. So it really was a very unusual experience. If it was the coral, I don't know. But um, in my opinion, I'm pretty sure that it was. Now the number one thing I want you to take away from this is that if this happens to you, seek medical attention because I had no idea if I was going to be okay. I suffered, as I said, for a couple of days afterwards and um, it could very easily have gone much worse. And if, if it happens to me again, I will take it much more seriously. So what I'm trying to say is don't be an idiot. Don't be like me. Right, anyway, hopefully you enjoyed watching my suffering. <laughs> if you did enjoy it, why not click that like and subscribe button. And uh, I still can't remember. It's like it's, it's like it's warped my brain. If you did enjoy it, why not click that like and subscribe button. If you just want to say thank you to everyone on the sports channel and Patreon, have a good week and I will see you next time. <laughs>